In the e-commerce space, there's this common misconception that Google Ads should only contribute a very minimal amount to your overall sales and that it should only be used as this bottom of funnel traffic channel. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. In this video, I'm gonna break down how this business made over $1.3 million in sales in the last 90 days only using Google Ads. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome on over. My name is Juan Valdez and I run my own e-commerce business and I also partner with other e-commerce businesses to help them scale. So with that said, let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanna go over is results. So here we are inside of the live Shopify dashboard for one of the e-commerce businesses that we work with. And very quickly, I wanted to point out, uh, as you guys can see here, the online store sessions didn't start tracking up until like July 12th. And the reason for that is this business was currently operating inside of Magento and they just migrated over to Shopify. And so the history in the online store sessions only recently started showing up. However, they did import all of their orders from Magento into Shopify so we can still see all of the sales history. So let's break it down. We're currently looking at the last 90 days and you can see that they've done $1.3 million in sales. And if we look at where the sales came from, if we scroll down, you can see that majority of the traffic came from search right? All the sessions right here broken down by traffic source. We have search in first place, direct in second. And then if we also look at the sessions by social source, you can see that when it comes to paid social, you know, they're not doing too much, right? We have traffic coming in from YouTube, some traffic from Facebook, but majority of the traffic is from search. And so I wanted to quickly highlight that. Now that we covered the data from the Shopify dashboard, let's look at the ad account. So here we are inside of the ad account and you can see that in the last 90 days, we spent a total of $200,000 on ads. We generated $775,000 in sales and we ended with a 3.84 return on ad spend. Now we also run ads on Bing for this business. And here you can see that in the last 90 days, we spent a total of $27,000. We generated $114,000 and we ended up with a 4X return on ad spend. Now, now, again, that doesn't account for all of the sales. The rest of the sales came from organic. So here we are inside of Google Merchant Center. Here you can see a breakdown of the traffic that we get directly from ads in the last 90 days, and also the traffic that we get organically from the free listings that we have up on Google Shopping. And so I wanted to cover a full breakdown of the ad accounts, but also Google Merchant Center, because again, when we look at Shopify, you can see that majority of the traffic for this in particular business is coming from Google, a mixture of the ads that we're running, but also organic traffic and even more specifically majority of the overall sales are actually coming from Google shopping ads which are the most profitable ads that any e-commerce business can run and so in case you don't know what Google shopping ads are they're basically these ads here that show up on Google whenever you search for a specific product and typically they are taking up majority of the real estate uh, at the top of the page and then you know after you see the shopping ads underneath them then you'll have all of the search ads and then search results but for e-commerce these ads here absolutely crush I would say 80% of all of the businesses that we work with are all running shopping ads. And across all of the businesses that we work with, 80% of their budget is going to either shopping or performance max. And the reason why is because again, like these ads just perform really well. Now, this in particular business, the strategy that we currently have in place is primarily focusing on Google shopping ads, right? And really maximizing all of our efforts there. Here, I have a breakdown of, first off, what we're currently doing for this in particular business, but also what we commonly see that other businesses that are not getting good results or as good results with Google ads are currently doing. And I wanna cover each one because I think that both of these would be helpful for you guys to know in case you're also running your own e-commerce business, right? So starting off on the left here, here's a breakdown of the things that we typically see done by the businesses that are not either getting the best possible results with Google ads or just very minimal results. And for this video, I am gonna have more of a focus specifically on Google shopping ads because for e-commerce, I believe that that should be the main focus, right? If you're running an e-commerce business, Google Shopping will almost always be the most profitable and highest converting types of Google ads that you can run. So I'm starting off here. One of the main areas that I see a lot of e-commerce businesses not really spending enough time, energy, and efforts on is on the actual Google Shopping feed itself. Typically what I see is that most businesses, they're just importing their product titles directly from their website and they're not taking the time to fully optimize their titles with the rest of the product information that could be helpful for when somebody is searching on Google, right? And um, I think that there's almost always a lot of opportunity here. The next thing I commonly see is there's absolutely no testing being done with you know a different product title, a different image, or a a different price, right? And um, this is something that almost all the time, it's like, it almost always stands out. And you can tell because, you know, when you ask whether there has been any testing done, the answer is almost always no, right? And, and this is something that's very common across the businesses that 
are seeing, you know, minimal results with their Google Shopping ads. And so overall, you know, when it comes to the Google Shopping feed, what we commonly see is that there's just a lack of optimization, a lack of testing, and just overall, like not enough energy, time, and efforts like focused on the Google Shopping feed. And when it comes to Google Shopping, the Google Shopping feed is the most important element. To be specific, like the breakdown is 70% of the results that you're gonna get with Google Shopping or Pmax is based on your shopping feed, right? So if your shopping feed is not optimized, you're already gonna start off on the wrong foot. And so it's very important to make sure you prioritize this. The other 20% that affects the overall results you get is your campaign structure and strategy. And the last 10% is your bid strategy. And in my opinion, like you should be initially prioritizing your shopping feed, but then you should be prioritizing the other areas. So the next component I wanted to review is the strategy and structure. From my experience, a lot of the e-commerce businesses that are not getting results with their Google ads typically lack an actual like account strategy. Most of the time, there's no strategy in place making sure that you have the right campaigns for top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And also they lack um, segmentation. So what I mean by segmentation is typically what I see almost all the time is that, you know, an e-commerce business will have all of their products grouped into like one main campaign. And regardless on whether their products have different prices, different margins, or they're in different categories within their overall business, they'll still group them all together. And this is a very common mistake because if a product has a different price point or different margins, or it's in a different category, it almost never makes sense to group all your products all together. And so very commonly, you know, this is something that I almost always see. And like anytime that I review an account, I can very easily tell like, you know, if we fix this and we actually implement a structure, then we can almost always get better results. And so overall, you know, when it comes to strategy and structure, I just very commonly see both strategy and structure lacking on the accounts that are not performing as well, right? And so almost always, whenever I review an account, you know, I can almost instantly pinpoint whether there's opportunity or not just by looking at the overall strategy and structure of the account. Now let's move on to the next component. Part of the equation is what you're doing with your Google shopping feed and inside of your Google ads account. However, the other component is what's happening once people click on your ads and actually go on either your product or your landing page. Most of the time, the e-commerce businesses that I see that are not doing as well with their Google ads is typically because of a couple reasons. One is they're not reviewing the overall performance from their Google ads and their product or landing page, right? They're kind of just reviewing the performance as a whole of their product page and landing page from all their channels specifically. And so I believe that you should be looking at the direct performance from your Google ads and your landing page instead of looking at all at once, right? Because when you're looking at blended results, you can't accurately measure, you know, what's actually performing specifically from the people and the traffic that come from your Google ads to your actual landing page. And so almost Almost always, uh, I see that, you know, any accounts that we come across where they're not seeing the best results, this is one area that almost always needs to be reviewed. Next is, I noticed that a lot of the times there's little to no research done to actually improve the product or the landing page. What I typically notice is that a lot of the businesses will just simply you know, they'll try some things out, but there's no strategic tests being done based on like what's currently working in the marketplace right now. And so overall, when it comes to the product and landing page, I believe this is also a super important area that needs to have its own time, energy, and efforts allocated. And the reason why is because it plays a big component. I've seen times where we've been able to keep the exact same ads running, right? And all we had to do was simply improve the product or landing page. And we were able to get much better results and performance from the same ads without even changing anything in the ad account, right? Or the shopping feed. And so this is something that's definitely worth reviewing. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, here I have an overview of all of the things that I commonly see being done by the e-commerce businesses that are getting good results with their Google ads. So, I mean, these are a breakdown of the things that we're currently doing for the business that I just kind of went over. This is exactly how we're helping this business generate almost all of their sales primarily through Google ads. And so um, let's go through each one. The first thing is we are prioritizing the Google Shopping feed. Before we even got started working with this business, majority of our focus was literally on the Google Shopping feed. And so literally one of the first things that we did is we reviewed the shopping feed. We took the time to look at, okay, well, you know, for certain products in certain categories, what are other listings that are showing up above ours, right? And what are they doing? What do their product titles look like? What do the images look like, right? And so by doing this, we're able to figure out what variables we need to test, whether it's the title or the image to rank higher in the Google Shopping results. And so this is one of the very first things that we do for all the businesses that we work with. And this is something that almost always leads to us being able to get a lot better results than the previous results before we came in. And so, you know, after we do our initial research based on, again, you know, what's currently working for the listings that are getting uh, the best search results for the their product categories, we then prepare specific title tests, specific image tests, specific pricing tests. And basically, once we run these tests, 
we then optimize based on what's performing, right? So we take the best performing titles, the best performing images, and the best performing pricing, and then we roll that out across all of the products, right? And so this is something that we not only do once, but we're typically doing at bare minimum once a quarter, right? Now, every single business is different. Every single business has a different amount of products. So it may be a little bit more difficult for some businesses that have a larger SKU count to do this, you know, once a quarter or even more frequently. But at the bare minimum, I believe, regardless of your SKU count, you should be reviewing your shopping feed and reviewing the overall search landscape, looking at, okay, are there any competitors ranking higher than your listings? And you should be preparing tests to roll out across your products as well. Because otherwise, you know, you can look at, for example, right now, if you search up Blender Bottle, right, you can see that um, right now, Lululemon, you know, they're currently ranking pretty high for this keyword here, Blender Bottle. But Blender Bottle, they should be getting majority of the traffic. However, you can see that Lululemon's listing, they have a completely different colored background. And if you zoom out, you'll notice that simply having a different color background will automatically make your product listing stand out compared to all the other listings that show up. And so re simply rolling out a test like this can lead to you getting much better results. We see this all the time. But unless you take the time to actually review the current search landscape, it's very difficult to pinpoint the fact that this is actually something worth testing, right? So that's just something very quickly I wanted to you know, go over because again, you know, this is not only important to do once, but on an ongoing basis. And so this is something that we typically see work really well for a lot of businesses because, you know, a lot of businesses don't take the time to do this. And so this is what we prioritize with all the businesses that we work with. Now, going over to strategy and structure, this is one area that we also place a lot of time, energy and efforts on. Before we actually start working on any business, one of the first things that we do is we actually take the time to outline a full funnel infrastructure where we outline the exact campaigns and ads that we're going to run for top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And typically, once we do this, we're able to align and really implement a full funnel infrastructure and strategy that aligns with the overall business's goals, right? Obviously, it is not easy to have 80% of your total sales coming directly from Google Ads. But as you can see, with this business, it is possible. And the only reason why it's possible is because we actually are taking the time to build a full funnel infrastructure, right? The next thing that we take time to do is depending on the overall number of products that a business has, we implement an actual like structure within the campaigns and also within the either if it's a Pmax campaign, the individual like listing groups, or if it's a standard shopping campaign, the individual ad groups, right, or product groups. And so um, this is one area where a lot of businesses, again, don't take the time to do, but this is very important because you need to have very hyper-targeted segmentation to be able to get the best results. So typically, you know, at the bare minimum, if you have different product categories for your business, you should have different campaigns for each of those product categories. This is something that typically works really well. Inside of the Google Ads account for the business we're currently covering, we have over 15 campaigns. And the reason why is because this in particular business has a wide variety of products. To be specific, they have over 15,000 products. And so one of the things that really helps when you have this amount of products is having, again, category and subcategory uh, campaign and ad group segmentation. And so again, every single business is different, but what I have found is for businesses that have high SKU counts, having this level of segmentation really works. Now, when it comes to strategy and structure, one of the last components here that I believe is super important is going based on the data that you have and optimizing accordingly, right? Now, not all the time, whenever we roll out this initial strategy, it always goes to plan, right? Or we see the immediate results we're looking for. Sometimes what happens is, you know, we'll get results from certain campaigns and we'll have to readjust the overall strategy and approach. And so something that plays a, a big role on the overall performance that you get with the Google ads that we see is, again, doing consistent optimization based on the results that you're getting, right? It's Google ads is not something you can just set and forget, right? You need to constantly stay on top of looking at what's working, what's not, and adjusting accordingly. Now, moving on to the last component of what I see a lot of the e-commerce businesses do that are getting the best results with Google ads is really taking a lot of time, energy, and effort when it comes to the product and landing page. So one of the first things that you know we do with all the businesses that we work with is we take the time to audit the current product or landing page that the traffic is currently being sent to. And the reason why is because there's almost always room for improvement. And again, our goal is to, of course, do heavy lifting in the shopping feed, right? And the overall strategy and structure. But if we can also get an additional five to 10% 
increasing the conversion rate that we're getting. This is automatically going to lead to overall higher profitability, higher conversion rates, and just better performance across the board. And so um, this is one of the first things that we typically do. The next thing that we do is we have a look at the leading competitors in the space. We look at, okay, you know, what do they have on their product pages, right? What are they doing? What are they not doing? And then from there, we'll put together an initial list of optimizations that we recommend for the e-commerce business to roll out. And so we personally don't do like the actual like product page or landing page optimizations. But what we do is we put together all the insights and learnings that we've gathered from reviewing their current performance, as well as the performance from leading brands. And we put that all in one in a document usually, and then we'll share it with whoever's responsible for optimizing the product page or the landing page for them to implement. And this is something that we have found to work really well. And so ideally, this is exactly what we're doing for the current business that I'm going over that's currently making majority of their sales from Google ads, right? And this is something that it takes time to implement, right? Like you're not gonna instantly come in and be able to roll all this out. But ideally, you know, it's worthwhile taking the time to break down and optimize these different areas because as you can see, you can have Google generating a significant amount of your overall sales. And so I wanted to take the time to you know, dive into all this detail because I wanted to bring more awareness to the fact that there is a lot more opportunity when it comes to Google ads specifically for e-commerce, but it does take time to actually like roll out an actual strategy in place like this, where you're focusing on the areas that matters most. What I typically see is a lot of e-commerce businesses, at least the ones that are not getting the best results with their Google ads is that they spend a lot of time on the wrong things, right? They spend a lot of time trying to tweak, you know, these things that just don't move the needle at all. And so what I want to do is just bring more awareness on where the needle can actually be moved when it comes to the Google ads specifically for e-commerce businesses. So yeah, I mean, overall, I hope that this was helpful and I hope that this brought a lot more clarity to the true opportunities within Google ads. And, you know, at the fact that you can actually, you know, have a higher percentage of your overall sales volume coming in from Google ads, as long as you actually focus on the right things. Now to bring things full circle, if you're running an e-commerce business and you're running Google ads currently, either internally or you're working with an agency, if you don't have enough efforts being placed on these three components, when it comes to your Google shopping ads, you will only see minimal results. You will never be able to scale to your business's true potential with Google shopping ads, unless you have enough time, energy, and resources placed on these three components specifically. From my experience, this is what we typically see time and over again. And so I wanted to stress the importance of this because once you actually are focusing on these three areas, which actually matter the most, and you're getting good results with your Google ads, you can then expand over to Bing ads, right? As you can see, we're currently getting 15 to 20% of the total volume that we're getting from our Google ads from Bing, right? And that's typically what we see, right? Most businesses, you're never going to have like a large amount of search volume on, you know, Bing, but you can still get anywhere from 15 to 20% of the total volume that you're getting from Google. And ideally, um, it makes sense to expand over to Bing once you're already getting good results on Google. Right, that's typically what we see. And then also, once you're getting good results with your Google ads and your feed is optimized and all of that good stuff, then you know you wanna make sure you're also paying attention to the organic reach that you're getting and the organic traffic because this can also play a big role in the overall volume that you're able to get from sales directly from Google, right? And so I wanted to make sure that I, again, really stress the importance of this because I know that for a lot of businesses, you know, based on what we see, right? We're speaking to, you know, tens of businesses every single week. And a lot of the times what we see is that, you know, this is being disregarded, right? Specifically when it comes to Google shopping ads. So if you're looking for a partner to help you with your Google shopping ads or your Bing ads, then down below in the description, there's gonna be a link where you can click on and actually book a call with me and my team. And on that call, we can review your current Google ads if you are running Google ads. And from there, put together an action plan to help you scale what you're currently doing and improve anywhere where we think there's room for improvement. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, as always, I would appreciate if you dropped a like on the video. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I covered in the video, uh, you can drop them down below in the comments. And with that said, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.